In Ukraine, we have we have had only a few presidents uh, since the Soviet Union has ended. The first one. Uh, let me just uh, quickly go and through Yanukovych the presidents. Yanukovych was the recent. One. Uh, no, no, Yanuk. I mean, before, yes, before Poroshenko. Let me yeah. start by the first one. The first one was Kravchuk. He did the big mistake of uh, letting the Russians have the nuclear weapons of Ukraine. Now, I'm not very, I'm not pro nuclear weapons at all. But when one nation has nuclear weapons and another one doesn't. The one that doesn't is basically the bitch of the other one. Uh, sorry for the uh, wording, but that's basically how it how it is. Yeah. You can't do anything. You always you always have a knife at your throat. And Ukraine had the third biggest ars nuclear arsenal in the world before that happened. So, first president Kravchuk started badly, uh, gave up the nuclear arsenal. He accepted the Crimea Tatars to Ukraine because the Russians didn't want them in their lands, and, uh, and they they now live in Crimea. But they kind of betrayed the Ukrainians Crimea, because they part of Russia again. Now. now it's part of Russia. Yes, I mean it was part of the Soviet Union, and it was uh, part of Russia, and then within the Soviet Union given to Ukraine. No, it was part of the Soviet Union. But was it not part of Russia and then made part of Ukraine? No, Ukraine no, being no. a Soviet Socialist Republic within? Definitely the... not, definitely not. It was part of the Soviet Union. And when the Soviet Union collapsed, it was decided to give Crimea to Ukraine because it's geographically connected and because it's much, you know, all the energy, all the resources actually come from Ukraine. Even though most of Crimeans are Russian speakers and, um, and they uh, dem many, there and are many, they, many Russians. The majority voted to become part of Russia. Yeah, okay, but let's, go, let's come to that a little okay. bit later. So I, I, I'll have to come back another time because I thought that Crimea was historically part of Russia within the Soviet Union and at one point wait, 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 one wait, of the leaders the in the Union. Soviet Union um, gave it to uh, the Ukraine because the USSR was uh, had autonomous regions within it, right? Russia... Uh, no, 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 no. There mean, were no autonomous regions. It was a socialist... The Union uh, of Soviet uh, Socialist Republics, yes. Plural, plural. Yes, yes, yes. So but, one of those republics no, but look, would have been uh, the, the Ukraine. The borders of Russia, as they are right now, have yeah. not been the same um, before the Soviet Union. The Russian Empire had very different borders. If you consider the Russian Empire as Crimea being Russian, then yes. But Ukraine was part of Russia, of the Russian Empire too, so that's not a very good no, argument. Absolutely, I would yeah, say. Sorry, it's a, um, it's, but um, in the Soviet Union, there were no, uh, no such things that, uh, as Russia, Ukraine, um, Belarus. Uh, you know, there, there, there might be some kind of um, uh, national feeling inside some republics, inside of the social, uh, you know, socialist union, the, yeah. the Soviet Union. But there were no clear borders, there were no clear definitions where Ukraine ends and Russia begins. Uh, again, because there was the Soviet Union, it wasn't Ukraine and Russia and blah blah blah. It wasn't like the United States where there are clear borders between the states. Uh, it was a bit more ambiguous than that. But let me come back sorry, to the president. Yeah, 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 it, it's cool, it's cool. If you have any questions, uh, just go ahead. Sorry, Crimea was part of Russia from 1783 when the Tsarist Empire annexed it uh, a decade after yes, the Russian Empire. Empire. Until 1954, when the Soviet government transferred Crimea from the Russian Soviet Federation of Socialist Republic to the Ukrainian Soviet Socialist Republic. This suggests the Russian, that, uh, that the Russian Soviet Federation of Social it was Socialist part of Republics. Russia prior to 1954, and in 1954, the, the, I, was, the there a, was there a gap between the end Crimea. of the Soviet Union and the uh, transition of Crimea to Ukraine? Was there a gap? Uh, I, I might not know about that small detail, but uh, either way, it probably was a very small gap. Yeah, like uh, less than a year or something. As far as I know, there was no gap to begin with, but uh, I mean, they might have tried giving it to Russia and then it didn't Why really did work. Why did Russia give away Crimea 60 years ago? Again, because it's geographically connected. All the resources came from yeah. Ukraine. But they needed but anyway, Crimea. The, yeah, so Crimea was part of Russia from 1783 when the Tsarist Empire yeah, annexed Tsarist, it yes. a decade after defeating Ottoman forces yes, the war against until the 1954 when the Soviet government transferred Crimea. But I've interrupted you. I apologize for that. What is happening in Crimea? Uh, sorry, in the Ukraine now. And you, you okay. can carry on your, your background. Yes, that was the first president, Kravchuk. The second no. president was Kuchma, uh, who was, uh, you know, he wasn't very liked by the people because he was very pro Russian. He, uh, so the, the people were not pro Russian? No, they're, not they're, at all. Not at all. Not at all. So After because what of, happened, because of during, what happened? The, during the Soviet Union. The, the Holodomor, the Holodomor. Okay. 10 million Ukrainians have died throughout two man-made famines. Okay. Um, I'll come back to that yes. uh, as well. Yes, yes, carry yes. on. Of course. Uh, so the people didn't really like Kuchma very much. 
Uh, so eventually we had the Orange Revolution. It wasn't quite a revolution, it was more like, um, you know, kind of a protest against the current government. And it was very peaceful, it was very nice, it was, uh, it was fine, it, was, uh, it looked like a good revolution, right? But eventually um, uh, Yushchenko, the main guy in the revolution, uh, again, revolution, um, he betrayed the revolution because he was uh, poisoned and his family was um, um, intimidated. He was intimidated because they told him that, you know, they made him know that he, his family would suffer and they would die, and he would die too because he, he kind of looked like a frog. You can look at him before the poisoning and after the poisoning. Poisoned by uh, poisoned. Russia? Yes. Okay. Poisoned by the Russian agents in Ukraine. Because he was, uh, you know, he was for joining the EU. At that point it sounded very good, joining the EU. I mean, again, at this point it doesn't really sound very attractive countries are actually leaving the EU right now. But at that point it looked very good, it, especially because it would offer us some kind of protection against Russia. Obviously Russia didn't, didn't want that because they see Ukraine as a buffer region between them and the West. Uh, but yeah, Kuchma was, uh, wasn't liked at all by the people. And there were two main uh, candidates after him, Yushchenko and Yanukovych. Uh, Yanukovych was very pro-Russian. He was basically the, uh, the, the candidate proposed by the states, uh, by the state, uh, by the state government to continue with the status quo. And um, the elections were rigged in Yanukovych's uh, favor. But you know, it was discovered eventually, so Yushchenko became the president. And in fact, I think even with the rigging, it wasn't, still wasn't enough to choose the Yanukovych over Yushchenko. So Yushchenko was president for a while, then he started screwing everything up because you know he he kind of betrayed the revolution he betrayed the ukrainian people he he didn't have the guts to risk his life and to risk his family's welfare to uh, fight for his for his country which is a lot to ask i understand his point of view it's a lot to ask to risk your own life and uh, risk everything but you know if you if you're not allowed to um, uh, to get shot at, don't point the gun at, at somebody. Don't take power if you're so not, if you're not uh, ready, to ready to for fight. big risks. Uh, and he did another bad thing, which is which was alienating Yulia Tymoshenko, which is another Ukrainian, uh, uh, you know, pro-European uh, deputy in Ukraine. Which and, is the Svoboda. Party. Svoboda. Yeah. Uh, Svoboda didn't exist at that point. Okay, I mean, if right it did exist, I didn't hear, I didn't hear of it existing at that point. I think Ukrainian it was only created after the last revolution. Okay. They are, they are, okay. they are late nationalists. But let's come to that later. Uh, Yushchenko alienated Tymoshenko, and after that, Tymoshenko had some, you know, some um, controversy going on with her about the treaty with Russia that was not very beneficial for Ukraine. So she fell out of the people's grace, and Yushchenko fell out of the people's grace, and basically there was nobody who the people could cling to. Okay. And Yanukovych took power because you know at that point the people were really uh, desperate for any kind a, of order. A Russian leaning very Russian uh, leaning, very yeah. pro-Russian with Yanukovych um, away from the EU. Yes. Uh, with Yanukovych the pro-Russian oligarchs took complete power of Ukraine. And that's what that's where we come a bit closer to to our situation right now when there was the last uh, revolution in Ukraine, the so-called Brown Revolution. Okay. As far as I know, um, and again, it wasn't quite a revolution, just as the, the orange one. It was uh, much more violent than the or orange one because many people died, killed by the police, killed by the you know the, the pro-government policemen who yeah. sniped them from the roofs. But again, um, the revolution itself was uh, sponsored by the West and the pro-Western oligarchs in Ukraine. Obviously, you can't make a revolution. You can't do anything without some kind of money, some kind of investment. And it the was the revolution the to topple Yanukovych. Yes, yes. Because he was anti-EU. He was pro-Russia. Pro yes. And have the people that uh, replaced him, amongst them, are there neo-Nazis? Amongst the top people who are actually ruling the country, yeah. no. There are no uh, neo-Nazis in, the, in, the, in the top in the top uh, in the top ruling class. Where are the Where are the neo-Nazis in the? There Ukraine? are some neo-Nazis, some uh, kind of some. Uh, very far right leaning very people right. in uh, some groups like the Azov and the uh, military groups that are fighting against the uh, the incursion, the Russian incursions in eastern Ukraine. But to begin with, they are the result of a very 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 desperate situation. And when they took power, um, did they outlaw the Russian language? No. 
that what, never what, happened. What was the law that was changed regarding the Ah, Russian yes, the, the actual law that Putin used as an excuse to invade Ukraine. So the law was to make Ukrainian, to basically consolidate the action, already existing law that made Ukrainian the uh, national language. And the law would just consolidate the fact that it would be the only national language. But no the, other the, national there, language. There must be a lot of people in Ukraine who feel they are ethnically Russian, who have uh, Russian citizenship. There are, there are a okay. bunch of people, especially in Eastern Ukraine and Crimea. But again, if we come back to why there are so many Russians in Eastern Ukraine, we come back to the Holodomor, which means uh, all the millions of Ukrainians were exterminated and the Russians were sent to their lands to Russify the, the Ukrainian lands to, and kind of bring them closer to the Soviet cause. I've heard people say that Ukraine was where the Russian nationality began or the Russian, uh, Russian uh, nationality. The Russian nation. I mean, where, it wasn't how? where the Russian nation began. Ukraine was uh, uh, where the Kievan Rus began. The, and the Rus, the Kievan the Rus. Uh, the people no, who wrote, it might right? be. It might be. Yes, yes. The, the, uh, it was founded by the Vikings. People. Okay. Exactly. It was founded by the, the Vikings. People. Kiev was a city founded by the Vikings, this is just the, like the bread Novgorod. Basket of yeah, Russia. just like Novgorod, just like many other cities in Ukraine. Okay. Uh, it was kind of a um, uh, co-rulership between the Slavs and the Vikings, because usually the Vikings were the uh, like the rulers. And the Slavs were the middle tier and the peasants. Um, um, obviously, Ukrainians are Slavs, so are Russians. Yes, they're both kind of Slavs and Nords and a mix between the two. And a mix, actually, of many ethnicities, because also the Mongol invasions, the, Tur the Turkish the incursions, the Tatars, are the Tatars, the some, Tatars, would they they're, be they're Mongols. Mongols? They're, 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 they're the Turkic they're tribe, which Turkic is a tribe. deceiving uh, name, because Turkic, you associated with Turks. But the Turks themselves, the, you know, the they Seljuks, yeah, they were, uh, came from Asia. East Asia. They were nomadic people yeah. who settled in Turkey. And Anatolia yes. was vastly Greek at the time. Like yes, before the Turks, before Byzantium. the Arabs. Uh, you know, uh, there was the, again, we were coming back way, way uh, back to history, but let yeah, me just speak about it uh, very shortly. The um, Turkey and the the Middle East, most of the Middle East, like Egypt, uh, Jerusalem, and all the coast, like Antioch, uh, Edessa, all those settlements were Roman settlements. Yes. Uh, more specifically, they were uh, the Byzantine So the Eastern Roman Empire. Yes, the Eastern Roman Empire. After the Western one fell, the Byzantine Empire still remained for many, many years. They did uh, suffer invasions from, uh, uh, you know, from Muslims, from the Arabs. And the Arabs have conquered Egypt and the Middle East and uh, then Anatolia. Some, some people look to Russia as the successor to the Byzantine Empire and, and the, the hub of the Eastern Orthodox Church. I mean, do you feel an affinity with um, the Russians in a religious sense, if not a national sense? The, the religion in Ukraine and in Russia is incredibly similar. Yeah. Uh, you know, the difference, there is a big difference between, not a very big, but quite a difference between the Catholics and the Orthodox Christians, uh, because the Catholics have the Pope. Yeah. It's the main figure, it's the guy who, it's the top dog, it's the guy who tells the rules, yeah. right? The Orthodox Christians don't have such a figure. They have many patriarchs. Yeah. There's one patriarch in Kiev, there's one patriarch in Constantinople, and there's the one Orthodox patriarch... Uh, uh, I think so, yes. Yeah. Uh, there's one patriarch in uh, Moscow. Now, there is some, uh, especially now, there is a lot of... Uh, um, Traction and the uh, animosity between the Kievan Patriarch, uh, Patriarchate and the Moscovite Patriarchate, okay. especially because of the so war and because of all the heat. The, the there is, there is, there is. But it's practically the same thing. Yeah. There's not too much.